This is just another guts video of a 1000 watt continuous 2000 watt peak uh, modified uh, square wave uh, power inverter Harbor Freight model uh, or part number 97047. See, there's uh, just the guts of it. It's a uh, 4 250 watt uh, 12 volt to 140 volt uh, DC DC converters. See these big diodes over here are the each are the grades bridge for each potential converter. That's the that's the power transformer for it. Then there's a 40 ampere ATC fuse. That each in this one each uh, as with lots of these inverters that have separate potential converters, each one has its own input fuse because it's cheaper than using one big uh, main fuse for the entire thing. This is the input uh, 12 volt side filter capacitor. This is the output side filter capacitor. And then over there, the TU220 package uh, MOSFETs for the primary side of each potential converter. And then these uh, gray things are the uh, heat, are the wall thermal resistance uh, silicone rubber pads over the TU247 MOSFETs for the um, output side H bridge, because that's how a uh, modified square wave inverter works because it just has the positive 140 volts and a negative 140 volts which is supplied from the same thing because what the H bridge does is alternately pairs of them fire or conduct so that the output you can look up on H bridges well if you need to I'll do a video on it uh, what happens is when each one fires you get positive 140 volts in the output, then negative 140 volts in the output, then positive 140 volts in the output, then negative, and there's an intervening space so that the root mean square average of the output is, 100, is about 120 volts, as opposed to regular sine wave electricity where it goes up to 170 volts. That's the peak value, down to a negative 170, 100, negative 170 volts, positive 170 volts, negative 170 volts, because root mean square isn't, it isn't like taking the average or the definite integral of a um, regular uh, periodic function like this. Of course, if you took the uh, average or the or did a definite integration of an integer quantity of periods on this, it would be zero. Whereas with the root of the mean of the square is where you square each little chunk of this, like this it's fairly easy, this it's just um, uh, the uh, potential of this times the time, and then for each other half of the cycle it's just zero. Then you take the mean of all of those values, then you square it. It isn't like regular uh, averaging type mathematics. You can look up what integral calculus is, like uh, Patrick JMT is a very good source on that for more than you ever wanted to know of stupid advanced mathematics. But that's a common misconception about this stuff. Lots of times I've seen people say it goes up to 110 volts, up to 120 volts. No. It goes up to 170 volts because that's the peak value. 120 volts is the uh, root of the mean of the square. It, it isn't like with averaging, because if you took the average electrical potential, this would be different, I think it'd be about 100 volts or so, but effectively it's 120 volts, because this is getting into the bits of the math of um, electronics where you tend to deal less with mathematics and more with giant gourds filled with mouse skulls and volcanoes and stuff like that. But anyways, back to the guts of the thing. Up here, it's just the uh, control logic, there's the warning buzzer for the low potential shutoff and the high potential shutoff and over temperature and over here you can see this bunch of wires here going to one of the uh, MOSFETs that is the low that is the high temperature shutoff because what it does is it assumes that this one MOSFET if this one's overheating it assumes that they're all overheating and it's cost cutting measure because it's Chinese um, and, uh, and I don't know if I've already covered this in the video because this is the I've had to reshoot this a number of times. This is the uh, you can see here that they, this uses 
1% tolerance resistors. But you would not expect to see this in a consumer grade device like this because you wouldn't need that kind of accuracy and they aren't. What it does is in the Chinese market or on the Chinese market you can get for stupid cheap like under a tenth of a cent you can get 1% tolerance resistors that are out of spec by only, like I got some once with some cheapy Chinese LEDs on eBay many years ago, that were 510 ohms nominal, the 1% tolerance resistors, 519 ohms. So they're out of spec by too much to make them genuine 1% uh, tolerance resistors, but in things like this where you'd expect to find 5% tolerance resistors, they're absolutely fine, you can use it with no problems. So that's another in more insight into Chinese cost cutting. And you can see over here are the two fans, one of which has a buttload of quality control stickers on it. And lots of people complain because these things are not thermostatically controlled. When each of these is only about a one watt uh, muffin fan, you don't need uh, thermostatic control in something like this. Because this thing already has a no load draw of about 16 watts or so, so it's, and especially when you consider the losses in it when it's running at full capacity, it's really kind of unnecessary and it's because lots of people, because of a excellent government education system, have absolutely no understanding of how electronics work. But this is, yeah, that's it, it's just your fairly standard consumer grade. Uh, power inverter, and when I get my PureSign uh, Sunforce unit, which I should be getting in the next couple of days or so, I'll do a video on that. So, and of course the really big do not reverse input to prevent injury and inverter damage. One of the yay English.